How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Souls Boss Rush plugin. So this is a really cool plugin. Um, basically I'll just show you what it does and then if you're interested you can stick around to see how to do it. So basically this is an event I created and it's just going to show choices and show text but um, Souls plugin brings up another scene and it brings up another little menu here. And in that menu, it lets you fight uh, whatever boss fights or even regular trash mobs um, from any bosses you've beat already. Um, or you don't even have to beat them. Um, you just need a switch. Um, you just need to turn on a switch for each different fight. So for every possible fight, you need to allocate one switch. Um, the, all of these images are images that's being loaded from the IMG slash enemies folder. So one thing I have noticed is there's no way to customize the, the name right here unless you rename the file itself. So in my IMG slash folders, I had to rename this image to roaming minotaur space level five in order for it to work like that. So this plugin doesn't do exactly what I want it to do, but it's pretty cool still. And I wanted to show a little, uh, show a little love to soul and shine a little light on this plugin that some people might find really useful. Um, it's a cool little plugin for like designing battle systems and if you want to be able to revisit fights like for my game example For example, it would be a good plugin to have uh, Because you have to fight several trash mobs to get to the boss So you'd have to fight like four fights and then you'd fight the Minotaur and four fights and then you'd fight the man-eater and so forth but it uh, lets you You know use whatever image you want as long as it's an IMG enemies and you can rename that file easily and then that lets you customize what it says right here and you just allocate a switch turn on the switch and use a plugin command to call this scene and then when you uh, start the battle um, it'll start it up and uh, let you fight and the you can lose on these fights so we could die here and it wouldn't be game over we would just be put at uh, 1 HP so this isn't um, this is like after you've already beat it you can turn on a switch for that event that you beat it and uh, let you beat it again for maybe you didn't get that 2% drop or that 1% drop that it can have uh, and you want to fight it again well now you can have like a book you could call this com uh, as a common event from an item you could put this in the main menu you can create an event like I did on the map to call it and you can basically see and fight all the bosses you know from anywhere in the game that you want I think it's pretty cool um, one thing I did notice is it breaks some of my plugins. Uh, so, like my place animation plugin doesn't work with it. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be using it in the final version of Dungeons of Driftwood as much as I'd like for it. Maybe I'll contact Soul and see if we could work some sort of uh, work around. You see, it didn't show the fire beam that goes across. It. I don't know why it's overriding some function, but um, it still serves its purpose. And I haven't had any other conflicting issues besides that one. So. Um, it's pretty neat, and if you're interested in seeing how this works, um, we'll jump into it right now. Got him. All right. So the first thing you're going to do, I'll put a link in the description below, is you want to download that plugin, and it's uh, soul underscore MV boss rush. And basically, you put that plugin in, put it towards the bottom. I haven't tried moving it around yet, so maybe if I move it around, uh, it'll be compatible with my plugin. So I'll probably try that next. Um, that's another tr uh, little tip and trick is if things aren't working the way you want try to move the plugins around a little bit and Maybe it'll just click and work perfectly um, So let's go over the parameters real quick everything that I'm going to talk about is in the help file But I think I'll make it a little easier if I just go over it So the background is what background do you want to have for the menu not the battle? But for like the menu you may have noticed that when we opened up the menu it showed Dungeons of Driftwood backward uh, background behind the scene so that's, you can basically have any background you want right there. And this goes into your pictures folder. So the background has to be copy pasted into the pictures folder. And then the file name is put right here. This is 70 and 100 by default. I suggest you leave these unless you've got some weird resolution. Um, I would leave these default and then mess with them if it doesn't appear to, to show it right or something. So those are pretty good uh, as default. The boss config. So here's where you're going to actually... Uh, put in the names of the files. So the boss name list, this is going to be um, in what order they appear. And everything is set up chronologically, so 
you have to put uh, whatever order you want them to appear in the menu, like I did 5, level 10, level 15, level 20, I have to write them down in that order, separating them with a comma. So I want Roaming Minotaur to appear first, level 5, so I put that, and this is also the name of the file that's in uh, the folder. Now let's see what it is, Roaming, so you can see that I had to name the the file roaming minotaur level five otherwise it doesn't work so that's one thing i didn't really like about it but it's no big deal right you can rename a file um so there's that um then you put a comma and you separate it for the next one and then you put a comma on the next one and there's no limit it stores it as an array so you can have as many as you want really and then the next thing you need to match these up this is the base troop id you need to match these up so that uh boss uh so the troop id 205 is the first thing it's showing on the list so i need 205 to be roaming minotaur at level 5 so if i go to my uh, database and go to troops i can scroll down to 205 and i'll see that 205 is the roaming minotaur fight that's going to be the appropriate for level 5 so that matches up perfectly and so that's the first thing that's there and you'll do the same thing you'll separate them all with a comma so I have uh, you know, troop ID 210, 215, 220, and so forth. And once again, it's an array, store as many as you like, just as long as it matches up. Because if they don't match up, you'll say, fight Romy Minotaur, and you'll fight the man eater. You know, if I did 210 and 205. So just match them up. The same thing with the switches. So in order for the boss to show up on the menu, a switch has to be turned on. So I've got 101 to 107 here. And let's look at the event real quick. So before we get into this fight, I'm turning all of these switches on. But um, if I were to use this plugin, um, these switches wouldn't be on by default. So how these switches get turned on are on the the battle uh, when you fight the enemy. The normal way you would fight the enemy, if I can find it, right here. After you beat the guy, you beat the boss, um, then it turns on the switch. So this is this switch will only trigger on once we beat him. So that's how I've handled it. After the battle, uh, battle process, processing, we fight him, we beat him, we get a reward, and we turn on that switch. Now that this switch is on, when we call that other event, um, it's going to show uh, on the menu right here. So uh, I would take these off. But how you actually call this event, how you open the scene, is you do a plugin command. So the plugin command is on tab three uh, right here at plugin command. It's pretty simple. You just type in start space boss capital r on rush so you just start boss rush as a plugin command and that will open up the scene and depending on what switches that have been turned on will uh, depend on what it will actually show in that menu so you'll have to event these in your game however you want these switches to be on there is another plugin command that's supposed to now i've tested it it's supposed to turn on all of the here it is Boss rush, boss rush, show all. It's supposed to show all the bosses. It doesn't work, at least for my version of the game and uh, the plugins. There's some confliction. So this second plugin command shows in the help file. Doesn't work for me. Let me know below if you get it to work for you. But the simple way around that is just turn on the switches and then it shows them. So um, that's the next thing. And once again, the chronological order. So we need this first switch to line up with this troop ID and this. Uh, the name of that uh, fight that you're going to fight so that uh, everything looks right. So it's really simple. We're going to fight Roman Minotaur level 5. That's the troop ID 205, and that's the switch uh, 101. So if 101 is on and you access the plugin command of show boss, uh, start boss rush, then it'll show that and you'll be able to, to fight him. Moving down to the window config, um, the boss rush title, you can put whatever you want right here. Just going to show the text. Um, these are zero by default. Uh, you can move it around, the title, move it around if you want. Um, the same thing with the size of the windows. You can resize them. <clears throat> the default, it scales. You know, it scales fine the way that I've got it. But you can change these numbers around if you want it to look a little bit different. Um, the same thing for, uh, so there's two windows. There's three windows that are being drawn. And you can move them all around. It's cool that we have the ability to, to customize it so it doesn't, you know, your boss rush can look different from some other boss rush. You can have it. Um, you know, instead of a small window here and then a big window, you can have it like half and half, or you can have the top window even be bigger. So you can mess with those numbers to fit your resolution to see what looks best. The way I showed you are the numbers by default. So then we have boss battle background music. Now, I wish this wouldn't be included, actually, because if you don't include a, a battle background music, it'll crash. 
So the quick trick to do this, if you don't, somebody saw, I saw a post on, on RPG Maker Web Forum. Uh, someone said, how do I make it so that I don't have any battle background music? I don't want there to be battle background music, and it crashes every time I don't put something there. So the simple thing is, you put something there, it doesn't matter, put any file that's actually in your folder. And let's take a look at where that would be. So that's your uh, game folder audio BGM. So you take any one, I don't know why I have MIDI files here, MV doesn't run MIDI files. I guess I was testing something. You can use M4A or OGG. Take any one of them uh, and then just, you know, copy like battle one. You don't need the extension. And you put that in here and just put a comma. And then um, the another thing is like for every, uh, every battle, you have to give it another background music because it stores it in an array and it looks at what battle background music for this boss. I guess it's cool. It's more functionality if you want each boss to have its own theme. That's kind of cool. For me, that's not going to really apply. And I don't know if that's going to apply to a lot of people, but... All you really have to do is paste the name of the file and put a comma and put a space. And then you paste the name of the file again. You put a comma, you put a space, paste the file again, put a comma, put a space. And you're just going to repeat this in a long, long, long list. And it's okay because it doesn't matter how long it is. It stores it in an array that you're not going to run out of memory. Just paste it a bunch of times. I've got it 10 times and I've only got seven battles. But you're going to need a name uh, of the file, a comma, a space, and then another name for every... You know, for every uh, switch, every boss graphic, every uh, every entry to the boss battle rush thing, you're going to need to have a battle background music. So it's very simple. If you don't want any battle background music, just copy paste it a bunch of times, at least once for every entry in the journal, and then you set the, the volume to zero, and you'll have no battle background music. Uh, so that's just a little trick that you have to use in order to uh, not have it crash when you try to load the game. Uh, another thing you can do is try to manipulate it uh, through uh, battle the troop events. You can do that and change it right inside the troop events. There's several ways to get around it, but this is an easy fix, right? Put the name, put a comma, put a space, there you go. And that's it for the parameters. The hell file is pretty pretty useful, and everything seems to be correct except for, like I said, this boss rush show doesn't actually work for me. Um, just start boss, boss rush works for me. And another thing I had was my place animations plugin doesn't uh, work correctly when um, this is turned on. So I don't know if it's a problem with my plugin or it's just an incompatibility. When two plugins don't work together, it doesn't mean either of, the, either of them are broken. It's just they weren't made to work uh, together. So maybe if I move this around a little bit, I can get it to work. But I think it's a cool plugin uh, and it might be something you guys want to add to your project if you want to add a boss rush. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I do lots of RPG Maker stuff, mostly MV. People keep asking me if I'll review their VX game. I'm not doing VX games uh, anymore. I still play a few every now and then when uh, uh, I see an interesting system. But I don't really review them and make videos on them because recording them is a pain in the ass for one. And when I do get it working, it still looks very pixelated and... I mean, MV's the way to go for me. I still love 2003. I still love XP. VX Ace has got a lot of things going for it. But MV's the way to go if you're going to do RPG Maker. Just because it's just so much progress has been made. And the fact that you can use JavaScript makes it so much better. So, um, yeah. Um, if you do have a game to send me, I do first impressions videos. Uh, you can send me your game. Uh, I refer, prefer if you would like encrypt it. Uh, just for, for anybody, you want to encrypt it. Um, play test it after you've deployed it, zip it up into a zip file uh, or a RAR file, upload it to Google Drive or wherever you want, Dropbox, Mediafire, there's a hundred places you can do it. I like uh, Google Drive best because there's no like download limit speed. I can download at really, really fast speeds and a lot of places will limit how fast you can download it. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Um, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel. Put your comments below if you have special requests or if you'd like me to cover a plugin. I have a couple of uh, new plugin requests that I'm looking into. Some plugins are complicated to use. Some are easy to use. Um, so some take a lot longer than others. But I'm looking at a few new plugins. We're going to shine the spotlight uh, on some new plugins and really have fun with uh, testing uh, some new stuff that you may or may not have heard about. There's, there's hundreds, if not a thousand plus plugins out there. And uh, let me know if you're if there's one that you really want to see a tutorial on. But yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys 
in the next video.